Let's talk about gain staging, what it is, why it's important, how to do it best practices, and how to deal with challenging gain staging situations. I'm Keith from No Label, No Producer, No Limits.com. Let's dive right in. So what is good gain staging? Simply put, gain staging is hitting the right places with the right levels. As a, for instance, you might be talking into a mic or singing into a mic, and that goes into an audio interface. And you need to turn the input of the audio interface up to the correct level. Too hot, it will distort. Not hot enough, it's liable to be a little bit noisy. If you record that track and then you put processing on the track, let's say a compressor or an EQ, the signal needs to hit that at the right level, go out of it at the right level. You might then have a group of vocal tracks that are all summing to a bus track, and those vocal tracks need to hit the bus at the right level. The bus needs to hit the master at the right level. If you're sending your mix off to a mastering engineer, well, guess what? They are going to want a certain level. They want to see a certain level on their mastering console. And the same is true if you're mixing or mastering, you have to hit certain parameters on your way out. That's simply gain staging, hitting the right levels at each stage of the audio process. Now, why is gain staging important? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The number one, honestly, is organization. If you have a mix, and maybe you've done this, so you've got a bunch of tracks grouped together and they're blasting the master and you have to turn everything down. That's a gain staging issue. If you find yourself with one fader up at plus eight and another one down at minus 45, that's a gain staging issue. Basically what we want is for the throw of the faders to be in a spot where we can move things up or down without any problems. And therefore we want signals to be hitting processing without having to get wild with the inputs or the outputs. In other words, a nice, easy flow without radical changes through the audio system. Now, there is a sound component to it. There are some programs, some VSTs or plugins that like to see a certain level of input. This is especially true of plugins that are emulations of analog pieces of gear. In those cases, the level that you hit them with is going to affect the sound. For the most part, in the digital realm, once you get past your audio interface and into the recording, you kind of have unlimited headroom to play with. However, the best practices are to keep things within a certain range so that when you run into a situation like an analog emulation plugin, you don't have to do something radical to deal with it. Gain staging best practices. When you're recording signals, shoot for about minus 18 on a peak meter with peaks going as high as minus 12. Now you can see here in Reaper, I have a meter, and if I mouse over it, it says meter peak. And this is the minus 18 level, so I'm just about right on the nose. And if I talk a little bit louder, it goes a little bit louder. You can see the peaks go up to maybe minus 13, minus 15, somewhere in that area. Again, this meter, if I right click on it I and go to meters, I can set it for some different parameters, LUFs, for instance, but I want to leave it to peaks so I can hit this level accurately. Now over on my audio interface is a green light. You can see this is a Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. And the metering is simply a light, a ring light around the input there of channel one. And it goes from green to yellow to red. Red is bad. If you avoid peaking and therefore distorting this audio interface, you're pretty much good. That takes care of about 80% of your gain staging issues right there is getting this input level right. Because if you get this input level right, your input level on the track will be right. Now, if you don't have metering that you like, you can add your own meter. And I'm going to show you what it looks like here on the input section of my channel. Now, you can put processing on channels in two places. One is here on the input that is before the signal hits tape as it were obviously there's no tape before the signal gets recorded or you can do it here after the signal gets recorded 
Now we want to monitor the signal coming in. Now I have this loudness meter and you can see here it says peak. So I'm looking at minus 18. This meter is big and easy to see and you can see where the peak level is. It's still below minus 12. So make sure you have a peak meter on your input. I will link to some free resources down below the video here and uh, if you don't have any metering that you like yourself. However, you can just search through your effects. Here in Reaper, for instance, if I click Add Effects, I can type Meter, and this is all the stuff that comes up. These are different meters that I have available. Okay, let's go through the process of setting a proper level for a microphone. The first thing I would do is I would plug a microphone into my audio interface, and you can see there, Channel 1 has a mic plugged into it. Then we're going to create a new track. I'll just do that with Control t in Reaper. Pull it down a little bit so we can see everything. Put it in record ready. Make sure input one is selected because I've got the mic plugged into input one. And then all I do is simply turn this gain up or down until I see about minus 18 on the levels here. Check one, two, two, one, two, check one, two. And that the louder parts don't go above minus 12. So there I am, that looks pretty good. Now keep in mind, once the little red light goes on, sometimes people get excited and they play or sing or talk a little bit louder. You can allow for that. But one of the beauties of this range of minus 18 to minus 12 is that you have some room. If they come in at minus 9 or minus 6 or even minus 3 during the actual performance, you're still okay. You're not going to be peaking over here at your audio interface, which is the crucial thing. And you can always turn it down later. So that's the process of setting a level. Plug a mic in or a guitar, create a new track, record ready, route the input on your audio interface to the new track, play with the gain until you're hitting about minus 18 during the main part of the performance. You're good to go. Now I took the liberty of recording a little vocal line at about the right level. Let's watch what's going on. We're looking for minus 18 here on this meter. And that's all I've got in the channel, no processing. A triceratops stole my lunch today, baby, but it's okay, but I'm a little sad. So we're at about the right level here, and I just want to point out, the signal flow goes like this. In this case, we've got a recorded file. It goes through this effects processing portion right here, which you see in this window, and it goes from top to bottom and then to the channel fader, which in this case is just a knob. So we've got nothing affecting the signal. This is just reading the level of the signal. But what we might want to do is add some EQ. So let's add re-EQ, which is the stock EQ that comes with Reaper. And I happen to know that there's nothing useful in my voice for singing down below maybe 100 or maybe 80 hertz. So I'm going to put on a high pass filter and we'll set that at 100, and uh, that'll help roll some of the mud out of it. And also I know that my voice tends to be a little bit woofy in the low mids, so let's pull some of that out as well. And let's, let's listen again. A triceratops stole my lunch today, baby, but it's okay, but I'm a little sad. Let's take a look at what that's done to the level. I'm gonna drag this after the EQ, so that now the signal goes recorded file, EQ, then meter. Let's see where we are. A triceratops stole my lunch today, baby, but it's okay, but I'm a little sad. Looks like it came down a couple of dB, and that makes sense because we are pulling signal out. We're pulling frequencies out. In fact, if you look at this meter, it will show you a faint line where the original signal is and a more solid line where the signal is coming out. And you will see in the low end, the line will be lower. A triceratops stole my lunch today, baby, but it's okay, but I'm a little sad. But up in the top end, nothing has changed. Okay, another thing that we might do is we might compress the signal. So let's pull up Recomp, which is the Reaper stock compressor. And I'm going to put it before the meter here. Let's try a preset here, Modern Vocal. And I'm going to just dial the threshold in. A triceratops stole my lunch today, baby, but it's okay, 
but I'm a little sad. Looks like we're taking about 3 dB off the peaks there, and that's going to tighten up our dynamic range a little bit. It's going to make the louder parts and the quieter parts a similar volume so that everything will be easier to hear in the mix. But let's take a look again at what we've done with our overall level. So now the meter is after the EQ and after the compressor. And where do we end up? We see we have peak up here at minus 18. Let's see where we end up now. A triceratops stole my lunch today, baby, but it's okay. But I'm a little sad. And you can see our level now is down here, maybe around minus 22 instead of minus 18. So this is the way that processing can affect your gain structuring. So we're coming in at minus 18, we're coming out at minus 22. If we stacked up even more processing, we might find that we're sort of out of whack, that we really need to turn up this channel fader in order to make up the gain. But here's what we should do instead. You notice that re-EQ has an output gain right here. So let's take this off and we'll drag the meter beforehand again and just take a quick look. A triceratops stole my lunch today. Okay, so I think re-EQ is going to need maybe two, two and a half, maybe three dB. There's 2.6. Let's drag the meter afterwards and see if we're in the same place. A triceratops stole my lunch today, baby, but it's okay. I actually think that it's a little bit, we need a little bit more. Let's go 3 dB. 2.8 is good. I think we're in the ballpark now. Now, remember, this level will now affect how hard we're hitting the compressor, so we're going to have to reset this compressor threshold, probably. A triceratops stole my lunch today. Yeah, you notice we're, we're almost at minus 6, so I'm going to pull this maybe 3 dB. A triceratops stole my lunch today, baby, but it's okay. All right, now I'm pulling about 3 dB off the top of the peaks. So this has an auto makeup gain right here. However, I don't trust it. I think it overcompensates a little bit. So I'm just going to use this wet level, and I'm going to come up about 3 dB. And now we've got the loudest meter, and let's see where we are. A triceratops stole my lunch today, baby, but it's okay, but I'm a little sad. Okay, I think we're good. We're right down there about minus 18 again. We peaked a little bit above minus 12, but I'm fine with that. So this is how you deal with gain staging in processing, is that you use the output controls of your various devices to match your input and your output level. Now, if your device doesn't have an output control, you can use something like uh, a volume plugin or a gain plugin, which you probably have. Reaper has volume adjustment, which you can use to add or subtract level on a channel. So remember, that's gain staging tip number two. In terms of processing a single channel, level in and level out should be roughly equivalent. Let's suppose you have an excessively dynamic instrument come in. Maybe it's voice or, or violin or anything. And they're mellow during the verses, but in the choruses, it's paddle to the metal, and you just can't get both those levels in the ballpark that you want them. One is too low or one is too high. Well, let me tell you how to deal with that. There are several different ways. The first one is, don't care. It's going to be okay as long as you're not peaking at the audio interface. As long as there's no distortion coming in, you're going to be okay. You can change the gain the level of the quiet parts later. And I'll show you that in a minute. The second thing you can do is record the sections at different times. So set the level for the verses, go through, record all the quiet verses, then turn the level of the mic preamp down at the audio interface, set the level for the choruses, and record all the choruses. Obviously, if they want to do a live take all the way through, you can't do that. What I do when I'm recording by myself, is I record the different sections at different times. But let's explore how to use clip gain to deal with it if they want to record one live track. And I'll give you an example here. Let's suppose I record a little narration. Hi, it's me. I'm narrating. And now I'm whispering. And now I'm narrating again. As you can see, this level decreases greatly here. 
while I am doing the whispering. So let's split that section apart very quickly with an, just click S on Reaper and right click and go to item properties. I'll move this up here so we can see it. And there's a volume pan adjustment. I can take this up, maybe uh, 12 dB, maybe 10 dB. Apply or OK. And now you can see we are back in the ballpark. So you can do this, and I often do this with vocals. You'll notice that if you cut a vocal track, you'll look back at the track and there will be places where the vocal is a little low, vocal is a little high. So I will clip gain just like this through the vocal track. It takes me maybe five minutes and therefore my vocal is much more even before I hit it with any kind of processing. Okay, let's talk about some gain staging issues I've had in working with my guitar and how I have overcome them. I hold in my hands my Paul Reed Smith SE Custom. And as you can see, I'm plugged into channel 2 here in my audio interface. And if you're plugged into the quarter inch jack, you can see there's a switch here. You can switch between line and instrument. Now, as far as I know, a guitar is an instrument. So... I plug in and I turn the gain all the way down. Now let's set levels for a guitar. I'm going to insert a track. The guitar is plugged into input two. I'm gonna make this big so that I can see the meters. So here we go, way too hot. And if you look at the input over here in the focus right, I'm in the red, bad, bad, bad. So. I uh, switch to line and that will give me a little more room to deal with. And as you can see, I switch to line and my level is much lower again. Too low. I can bring it up over here. Now, here's the problem. I noticed, and I'll show you this in a second, if I record a little bit on the line level input it sounds dull and lifeless whereas on the instrument level it sounds it has more treble more presence i will what i will do is i will record a little bit and i'll gain match it and play it back for you so that you can hear it here i've recorded the guitar in yellow on the line level input and in blue, we have the instrument level input, and I've gain matched so that they are about the same volume. Listen and see if you can't hear that the line level input is a little bit duller, and the instrument level has a little more brightness and sparkle to it. Can you hear that? That's why I want to record on instrument level. So on instrument level, it sounds good, but it's too hot, even all the way down. And on line level, it sounds dull and useless. Well, there's a couple of ways that you could go about this. The first is to buy a direct box or a DI, direct injection box. And that's a device that turns a instrument level signal, such as a guitar, into a mic level signal. And in that case, I would then plug it into the mic input and perhaps the mic input would have more room to deal with the hot signal. Especially if the DI had something called a pad on it, and a pad is just a switch that will turn the input level down, maybe 10 dB or something like that. So a DI box with a pad on it would work. The second thing I could do is buy an audio interface with better inputs, but I'm, I'm a cheap m so we will skip that one. The third thing that I could do, and this is what I decided to do, I switched to instrument, I turned the gain all the way down, and then I rolled off the volume on my guitar until I'm hitting about 18. Okay, I'm good. Green on the interface. Minus 18 with the peaks going no louder than minus 12. Now, you might say to yourself, but wait, when I turn my guitar down into my amp, the tone changes, the level of distortion changes. So I did a little test on this too. I played some guitar with the volume all the way up. 
I played some guitar with the volume where it is now. I gain matched them in Reaper and I listened and the tone is the same. So what I do to solve this gain staging problem when I'm recording guitar is I roll off the volume on my guitar and that way I get a good level. Okay, I've taken the liberty of recording a couple of guitar tracks to demonstrate what to do when you run into gain staging issues with plugins. So here's guitar one, and I have a meter on the track. It's the JS loudness meter, and I have an amp sim, but it's not turned on yet. And the way the signal flow goes here is like this. It goes from the audio file through this FX processing area, which you can see open right here, it goes in order from top to bottom. So this passes through the meter. And then if I had this turned on, it would pass through the amp sim. And then it goes to the channel fader, which in this case is just a volume knob. So we have file processing top to bottom and then fader. So let's see where we are in terms of level. Looks like we're about right. We're sitting at about minus 18 and the peaks aren't as high as minus 12. So now let's take a look at the amp sim. And this is a plugin that's designed to sound like a guitar amplifier. Now here's the signal flow on the amp. The signal comes from the audio file and hits the input of the amplifier here. So we have to see a good level here. And then it travels through the preamp gain and through all this stuff, and then out the master. And there's also one final master output, which I assume doesn't affect the character of the sound, whereas this one might. Now, I turned this on and it was louder than heck, so I've brought this output way, way down. Let's see where we are when we add this to the signal flow. Now, as you can see, we're barely kicking off the green right here. So that isn't good enough for me. So I'm going to hit this a little harder by turning up the input. Let's see what that does. That's all right, but that's not enough for me. So what do you do in this situation? I'm going to zero this out again. I'm going to add a gain plugin. And this is a plugin that's just going to give me a solid clean boost and not do anything else to the signal. I'm going to use this JS volume adjustment. Now, you might not have this plugin unless you have Reaper, but you will probably have a similar one in your DAW. Search for gain, boost, level, volume, trim, and see what you come up with. And I'll leave a link below with a resource that will help you cover this if your DAW doesn't have anything. Now, we want the volume adjustment to occur before the amp because we want this amp's input to see more level. This also has a limiter, max volume, but I'm just going to kick that to the right because I don't need it. So we're set at 6 dB gain, and I'm going to boost this up to 10. I'll type the number in. And now let's see where we are on the input. Okay, that's better. I'm still still going to go a couple of dB hotter here. Let's see. Okay, I'm good with that. Now we're going to drag this loudness meter to after the amplifier so we can see where we're sitting in terms of loudness now. Looks perfect. We're sitting right at minus 18. Now, if we were too high or too low, we would adjust that with this final output stage here. As you can see, we're taking a lot of gain out. So we boosted a lot of gain in the beginning with this volume up 10 dB here, up almost 4 dB here. So up almost 14 dB, and then we pull out 16 dB. And this, of course, is gain staging tip number two. 
When you do processing, as a general rule, your level out should be about the same as your level in. So I've got minus 18 coming in to this channel, and then I've got minus 18 going out. Now let's take a look at the next channel that I did. So we'll mute this one and unmute this one. We have the same thing going on in the input, not processed at all right here. So our level's about right. And I have a new amp here. This one's called Humble by ML Sound Labs. And let's see if we're hitting this input hard enough when I turn it on. I don't see any lights anywhere. So I'm going to crank this input all the way up. And in the meantime, I'll turn this output down a little just in case. And let's see what we get in terms of input. Okay, solid green there. I'm okay with that. Let's drag the meter to after the amp and see if we need to adjust the output volume. Yeah, that's a little low. So let's come up with this output volume just a little bit here. Check it again. Okay, we're good. And now let's listen to these two together and let's watch the master meter. Remember, we have minus 18 on this channel and we have minus 18 here on this channel, guitar two. Let's see what they add up to in the master. As you can see, they end up at around minus 15, which is the way that decibels add up their logarithmic. So if you have a bunch of buses all feeding in at minus 15, let's say, or minus 12, eventually your master is going to get up to minus 10 or minus 7 or minus 6, which is about where you need to be in order to send your mix off to a mastering engineer. So that's one of the points of gain staging, is to get everything to add up to about the right level on the master. Another gain issue I sometimes see is a microphone with a very low output. For instance, the Shure SM7B is a very popular podcasting microphone that also has home studio recording applications, but it's got a very low output. It's possible that your audio interface doesn't have enough oomph to get it to the proper level. So in this case, we might want to use an inline amplifier, and this is just a device that your mic cable plugs into, it boosts the signal, and then you plug that into your audio interface, and voila, you have enough level. Below, I'll link to a web page which will give you several options if you need a device of this type. Cloudlifter makes a very popular one, as does a Clark Technique and Triton. They are a little bit expensive, from maybe 50 bucks to 150 bucks US, so you'll have to include these into your budget if your mic preamp on your audio interface won't boost the level up enough to be usable. Let's talk a little bit about the signal to noise ratio and how it relates to gain staging. Signal to noise ratio simply refers to the ratio of the music, let's say the guitar, as compared to the hiss in the circuitry or other unwanted noises. We want the signal to be high compared to the noise. So we want a high signal to noise ratio. Now any guitar amp or guitar amp simulation will have some inherent noise in the circuitry or the programming. And one of the reasons is because we're boosting this gain, these preamp stages, in order to get a nice distorted guitar sound. Now what happens if we hit the guitar amp with a low level of input, a weak signal? Well, the inherent noise in the circuitry is going to be loud compared to the guitar. We may have to turn the gain up here in order to get the level of distortion that we want, and the noise will come up with it. Now, what happens if we hit the input with a stronger signal? Well, that's better. The signal will be louder compared to the noise. That's good. We may even be able to turn the gain down because we're hitting the input stage harder and still maintain the same level of the distortion that we want. And when we turn the gain down, the hiss will go down with it. 
thus improving the signal to noise ratio. Now this principle applies across a wide range of contexts. In general, we want a good strong signal compared to the level of inherent noise in the background of your recording environment or in the circuitry. So that's one reason we want to hit the input stage of this amplifier at a good level. If you find this content valuable at all, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, share, comment. Do it now while you're thinking about it. There will also be a link below to a web page that has more in-depth information about this video, including download links for some free resources related to the video. So that's gain staging, what it is, best practices, and how to deal with challenging situations. I hope that helps. It's Keith from no label, no producer, no limits.com. See you next time.